Hello. <laughs> no, sorry, I was re record. I was going to forget to record, so I just put that on there. So, so sorry. Just introduce your singer or pianist or singer pianist or. So she's a pianist and she also does some singing as well, just a oh. little bit. <laughs> oh, right. And um, the concert we did last. Oh so, yeah, no, I, I saw that. Yeah, so it was, um, this was us. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, so yeah. and and sorry, what the guest's name? Your Nicola. 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 Hi. And you're where are you from? I'm from Slovakia, and now I'm living here in Switzerland, teaching piano. All right. Okay. So you work together. Well, we have a duo, but we don't work together as oh, teaching. Okay. No. Oh, okay. Good. And the song you're going to sing today? We're going to sing Titanium by Sia slash David Guetta. Oh, right. okay. Very good. Right. So, uh, yeah, welcome, Laszlo. You're on mute. Just wanted to say hello because you're, you're late. <laughs> okay, managed. So, hello, everyone. Sorry for being late. I just finished another call before. So, yeah. it was not yeah. easy to find the link. So, I'm not sure where I. Uh, yeah. It was one of the well, it's always the same link. I know, but it's still. <laughs> you need to you need to find you need to find the message where you found the first one. I thought I put it in the chat every week, and it's it's in the post and everywhere. Yeah, yeah, it was in the December sixteen post, so I actually had to go uh, back. Okay. Anyway, yeah. no worries. Sorry for interrupting. No problem. So over to Emily. All right. The floor is yours. How's that? Can you see us both fully? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
Bravo. Excellent. Yeah. I love that song. I love I don't, it. Don't know it so well. Thank you. <laughs> right. So that, that was fantastic. So that, that you that was the first week back. So this is our first guest of the year. So our seventy first guest. Right. So thanks for that beautiful song. No worries. Right. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. <laughs> yeah, Emily. I, when I record these and I put them in my YouTube channel, I'm not allowed to publish. It keeps coming back copyright infringement on the songs. Oh no! We'll have to just start doing our own songs then. <laughs> Yeah, so or we have to move it from mm. YouTube to somewhere else or Rumble or somewhere. But every time I do that, it doesn't. I can have it unpublished so they can share the link, but I can't publish it. You should be able to because lots of people do cover songs on YouTube. So I think if you can test it, it should be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you're just too good. That's that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> they think it's the real thing. You see. <laughs> Right. Anyway, so, so thanks for that. Are you going to hang around or disappear? Unfortunately, we have to rehearse, so I won't be able to stay this week. All right. But I will no watch problem. the recording to find out about the guest. Uh, Paul's just missed you. Oh, oh did, you, did you catch Emily? <laughs> Still sleeping. Right. Anyway, so we better get a move on because we've got a pretty much hard stop on the hour. So, um, and there's a lot our guest has got to talk about. So thanks, Emily. Well, Thank thanks you. both of you for that, that great song. Thank you. Okay, so let's, let's make a start then. So for those are, oh, Michael, you can hear us now. Okay, I had a few um, technical difficulties. I think that's what they call it. When you're a bit ignorant on computers, <laughs> turn my computer off and then put it back on again and fiddle about you know what it's like when you sort of sort of push stuff take stuff out and then all of a sudden it works so um yeah i'm not very good at computers i'm afraid but we got there in the end yeah the best thing is switch it off and switch it on again and it normally yep. cures everything <laughs> okay so let's make a start so this is being recorded it's for the purposes of the the guest for memorabilia and also, if people missed this and wanted to see it, then they, they can have a copy of the link. The, the link isn't published because <laughs> YouTube doesn't let me publish it when we have a guest singer, which is ironic. But anyway, uh, if you want a copy, then just let me know and I'll share the link with you. So let's not waste any more time and let's go straight to Gina. Maybe you can pronounce your name because I always get names wrong. So I was, uh, you're our first guest of 2022. So congratulations. And you Thank are you. our 71st guest. So again, congratulations on that. Thank you. So, Thank you for having me. Yeah, pleasure. So maybe pronounce your name and because I'll get that wrong. And so it's Gina. Gina, okay. Got oh, that yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, and my last name is Urthiva. That's a, that's a word I made. You made that up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's not yeah. really your surname. Sorry? Right. That is your new surname? Yes, uh, so that's what I call myself now, Gina Urthiva. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. And a, a particular reason? Does it yes, mean something? Um, so Gina was always my nickname. Um, and Gina in Hindi means to, to live. And Urthiva, I chose, I created this word because I was looking for a word that could describe the feeling I have uh, regarding my identity of who I am. And that question you asked uh, James about the Simon Sinek comment, you know, the who I am was very crucial to me. And I found that I'm just essentially someone who wants, who's born out of the earth to serve the earth. Eva means blessing, earth means earth. So I'm born out of the earth to be a blessing to the earth. And that's how I want to live my life. So uh, you're a blessing to us. Thank you. <laughs> it's, a, it's a blessing to have you here. So Thank you. So anyway, we're going to take you on a little journey, so, as we do with all the guests. So we're not going to start with your business and what you're doing now. We're going to do that a little bit later on. So it's better to get to know who Gina is. So let's just go back down memory lane and tell us where you were born and maybe and where you are now. 
Um, I was born in this city um, called Calcutta, and um, I, I was schooled there, my college was there, and then um, as I went into my musical career, I made the move to uh, Mumbai, which is like, uh, which is where I am, and it's also the hub of all the cultural film and Bollywood activity, if you know anything about the Indian film world. So I moved here for my career in 2013. Ah, so Bollywood is is based in Mumbai. Mumbai, yeah, yeah, essentially, <laughs> and especially where I live, it's like everybody here is either an actor or a singer or a composer or something, something, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so but Mumbai used to be called Bombay. Yes, it used to be called Bombay uh, because the British colonized us at the time. Uh, Calcutta um, is it's now Kolkata. Calcutta is the British name, Bombay is the British name. So we went back to Mumbai. So yeah, that's uh, that's a little bit about. So because you're in Bollywood territory, mm -hmm. it, do you have a connection with Bollywood? So yes, um, I sang a song in Bollywood and several other songs in films uh, which were not really uh, Bollywood, but regional films. Bollywood is only those films which are the uh, films that are made in the national language but yeah I've been singing in different films for 13 years and then I stopped that to do what I do now okay so, so just singing in Bollywood or singing and dancing so dance was my original passion much before music came in to the picture music was just always in the picture on the side though dance was the main thing when I was growing up but I never took it up professionally I ended up moving into music, um, which was so would you be seen, natural to me. Would you be seen on a Bollywood movie or just heard? Just heard. So in Bollywood, there's this concept of, you know, almost every movie is a musical. Now that's changing a bit now. Um, so there are a lot of songs in the films. And these songs by themselves become hits or not such a big hit but the songs are a big deal in the films and people listen to the songs separately but the the artist of the song uh is not necessarily the songwriter or the composer it's just the singer um and the actor who's there on the film mostly the song is in the background or sometimes they're lip syncing to the All music right. so that's how it is in bollywood um uh, yeah but i didn't i i kind of moved out of that because it wasn't really who I was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because actually they did a Bollywood in Switzerland, in Bern. Mm. Yeah, quite a okay. few years ago now. I remember it was all set up in the in this city and they did uh -huh. a big Bollywood thing. Uh, okay. I, I used I used to follow Bollywood because when I lived in the Netherlands, I had uh, a girlfriend that was from Indian origin, or uh -huh. from Suriname. Okay. And uh, she was big into Bollywood movies. So I mm. never watched any until I met her. I mean, I, I was like, I became addicted to Bollywood movies as well. And, and I saw myself as this dancer and everything. And I, Yeah, you, and, so, so you know about the song and dance. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, you, you got to really like it. But I mean, yeah. Yeah. also, I mean, the, the stars are, are typically very beautiful. Yeah. Both the men and the, the women, uh, in yeah. particular yeah, for yeah, me, yeah. The, the women. Yeah. So, so when you said Bollywood, I thought, oh, yeah, you're one of these good looking actresses. <laughs> Okay, maybe I should take your, um, just what you said and send it to some casting directors and say, hey, you know, yeah. somebody, thinks, somebody thinks I should be on a film. <laughs> okay, so, so let's kind of move on from that. So do you, you have any brothers or sisters? No, no. So I'm just the only child. Just you. And, and then growing up as a kid, were you always into music? Uh, yes, I was always into music, um, anything creative, actually. Um, music came to me very naturally. But the funny story is um, my parents wanted me to learn singing in the right way because I could sing in tune and all that. And they wanted to, you know, get me trained. And that was a nice thing because in my culture where I come from, that city is full of, um, you know, cultural stuff. So if you learn how to sing and say do re mi before you learn how to say ABC, you know, it's like that. So learning to sing is a very normal thing there. And I would just run away from every teacher that was brought, you know, 
uh, to teach me and because I was not interested in the normal way of doing it and I always was looking for some something different and to get my attention a teacher had to really work hard you know, to just uh, get my attention um, uh, yeah so I just uh, ran so, away from so you were, them. So you were singing before you could do much else? Sorry? You, you were singing first before you could read and write and everything else, I mean, singing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, if, if the teacher singing. wanted your attention, couldn't they sing to you? Yeah, they did, but I I was not interested in those kinds of songs. Or the, ah, like, okay. I, was, I, I, I was always running away from too much of convention and... Uh, uh, I didn't see the point of it. Of course, I know there is a reason why you need to do it a certain way sometimes, but um, I always uh, was drawn to people who could show me the creative sides first. And finally, okay. I did find my piano teacher who was really amazing. And oh, he, did you play, play the piano as well? Yes, 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 I do. So I got trained in piano and that, that's what I stuck to. And I didn't learn the singing bit and that that was forgotten and I was like oh I can sing on my own I don't need a teacher and all that but later of course I took training um but that was much 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 later I took to piano because I like my teacher I, okay. I, I I'm always fond of things because of the person who teaches me so yeah you have the, you have the piano there sorry is the piano there no, 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 not in Mumbai. I just have, I use my keyboards and everything oh, to okay. make music now, but yeah, not my, my, my son plays the piano. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, he, he's nine on Sunday, right? And mm. yeah, I, a year ago, he, he was looking at instruments to play and then, mm. so he's trying different things. And then he got on the piano and he was just natural gifted. Oh, and, and that's the good. teacher's amazed. I mean, now he plays with two hands, doesn't even look at the music. He can memorize everything. Uh, he knows where the keys are. That's and, amazing. And he could you could show him this like the 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 chords and everything for one song, and then he's mm -hmm. memorized it. Oh, so he and, just has it in him. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody has a gift. Yeah. Right? I'm still looking for mine, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you, you can you You've can connected us all. That's a gift. Yeah, you can see it in people. So you were doing dance, I mean, Bollywood type dance as well. What? Um, no, no. Um, when I learned dance, it was um, Indian classical uh, form. And there are many Indian classical formats of dance. Okay. Um, so I learned a specific format called, uh, a specific form called Kathak. And it's very beautiful and fluid and flowing. And yeah. Is it hard to find a dancing partner? Sorry? Is it hard Is it? to find a partner for dancing? Um, no, is, I mean, this, is it this, mainly form, women of dance, or mainly this women? form of dance does not need any partner. Oh, uh, okay. This is just, uh, right. Yeah, it's really uh, like you can be, you can just unleash <laughs> with this form. Is it, like, uh, is it like Turkish dancing? Mm, close in a way. Elvin close. does Turkish dancing, don't you? Sorry? Elvin does t Turkish oh. dancing. Don't you? I'm only saying that because she's not there. You see. I'm here. She's no, no, not I'm here. The camera. <laughs> she can hear us. No, no, I'm here. Sorry, I thought that I, I hear the Turkish dance, something like that. Yeah, do you do Turkish dance then? <laughs> no, actually, we don't have a traditional Turkish dance, like a, a traditional yeah. dance that we have the traditional clothes. But the thing that you are talking about, like the Oriental one, like the mm -hmm. Arabic version, yeah. yeah so okay. It's more cultural than that one. Uh, yeah. I used to take a course to do dance like that, but it's really hard. Mm. So to do it, you have to put your pressure, put your weight. Oh, yeah. yeah so yeah. I show respect to the people who are doing this and also to Jan. Yeah. You yeah. said yeah. that you're a dancer, which is a good thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it needs a lot of discipline. Oh, yeah. So yeah almost it should work because. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, absolutely. It's a great job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. Okay. All right. Thanks. I'm here, by the way, okay? So, yes. I don't yeah. want to looking like that. <laughs> no, 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 you're looking wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. you. You look great. If this is what you look like when you're sick, then when you're better, you must be even more beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'm a bit more demoralized because of the sickness. Uh, so that's okay. really but, okay. but thank you, Evan, for making it despite being sick. Thank you. That 
that's for me the beauty of your spirit and that's more important than anything else okay <laughs> so, so let's just move forward because i don't want to run out of time and there's lots to get through here so you also uh, into a couple of other things i mean you, you said because i sent out a questionnaire just so i can guide kind of guide the, the journey so you put maths in there are you a mathematician so yeah, I no, I used to be very good at math, and I used to like score like full full marks, and I would get upset if it was ninety nine instead of hundred. Uh, but uh, I I lost practice and all that. But I, I I was very fond of science and mathematics, so uh, physics and maths uh, that was my zone. Apart from art and culture, science was another thing. But but, but maths is actually scientific. I mean moving into kind of the cosmos and spirituality then num numbers are significant absolutely. Right? absolutely so did that also help because i know yes, you're a, a very spiritual person yes so yes. when did that start so my or not necessarily start was because it was, uh, was the, always yeah it was, it was always, always there. there i think it's there with everyone just the awareness um your question is probably about when did I become aware of it? Exactly. Uh, the answer is, uh, I think from day one, when I, whichever was my first day in my memory, uh, I remember being very like uh, curious about, oh, why does anything happen the way it happens? Oh, why is that? Why is it? So it was for me, uh, when people, people talk about spirituality or science or art, there are different names for these things for me in my mind and in my experience they're all the same like for me and for me the question why is what leads to science is what leads to spirituality it's what leads to art or why or who or where or what. I, I just like to question and and then go on that journey and then in 2010 I was introduced to something that totally revolutionized my inner experience of life and that was my Buddhist practice and uh, I've been practicing for now it will be 12 years um, and this practice is all about empowering myself and others and it's very much part of everything that I do uh, not not in a spiritual way but in a very very practical way yeah no, I, I love it because I I, similar to you, I mean, I've always felt kind of that spiritual connection, although I never saw it as being spiritual because I, when I grew up as a kid, I mean, if someone said they're spiritual, you thought, oh, keep away from them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So <laughs> it, it wasn't until later that you understand a bit more about what it actually is and then think, well, I'm, I've always been kind of that way. Yeah. And yeah. very interesting, particularly when you, you find out who your cosmic parents are. Yeah. Yeah. Minor, yeah, we'll save that for another day, but I know, I know who mine are. Oh, but, wow. That's and great. they're actually from Indian origin, or they are. Oh, yeah. okay. But I'll tell you that later, because it's about you. So in this, I mean, you went also some significant turning points in your life, because you were doing some singing for Bollywood, mm -hmm. and then you had a problem. Yes. Um, I was in my hometown in Calcutta. I was singing for so many films. I was hosting a TV show. I was winning awards for my songs. And then I moved to Mumbai, which is where I'm in right now. Um, and I sang in Bollywood and that was my big break and all that. But suddenly I lost my voice and I could not sing anymore. And I sounded like I don't know, maybe like a goat or something. I don't know. It was so bad. My voice just I would made say you sounded difference. like Boyan. You remember Boyan from last last time? Boyan is normally on here, so he's going to listen to this recording, but he's in Bulgaria. But he, okay. I always say to him that you can be the cover singer uh, that if, <laughs> if someone can't make it and he can't sing. So you would have sounded like him, I guess. Yeah, I, I don't know. It was bad. I just wanted to like hide from my own voice. Um, and then, of course, I went to the doctors and they couldn't, you know, help me. They couldn't diagnose the problem. And this went on and on and on. And at that time, I wanted to run away from music 
completely because any if any song was playing anywhere even in the background it would make me cry because i would want to hum along at least if not sing along and i just couldn't do that even just humming was not possible so i wanted to just you know to say music stay away from me i don't want to go near you and then i just you know tried to avoid it and over three years, this continued, but what, what happened was I went through a massive identity crisis. I didn't know who I was anymore because when you identify yourself with being just a singer and then you don't have the weapon that you use to sing, then you don't know who you are. And then that creates a, a crazy, um, uh, a crazy state inside of me. I, I felt like, I felt like a zombie, like I couldn't, um, understand what I was doing anymore. I was depressed. I was anxious. I had insomnia. Um, I should connect with Sheila at some point to discuss our and exchange our thoughts on sleep. Yes. Um, yeah. So I went through that for a long time. And then at some point I came across this line by my mentor, Dr. Daisaku Ikeda. And he said, we have to transform the life state of humankind. And that line just stayed with me. And I decided to use music to transform the life state of humankind. And of course, that was just a statement. I had no skills in making music in any other way than just singing. So I figured my way out and created something that I um, am really happy about. And in three years, I used that same technique, a music-based technique for the mind to recover from not just my mental health issues, but also I recovered my voice issues. My vocal cords started working again. And even though the doctors couldn't understand the problem, I, I figured the problem. And, and then three years later, I got my voice. And even after getting back my voice, I wasn't sure if I should share about what I was creating. So I just, you know, buried it and went on with my singing again. And then in 2019, my my whole being just revolted and said to me like what the hell are you doing like that was my inner voice was like you know be who you are what are you trying to be um and then i just said okay what what the heck let's just release this stuff and then i started releasing what i do now wow so when you lost your voice i mean did it you felt it coming like oh i've got a bit of a tickly no. throat or something or no 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 it wasn't it was just a normal like a throat issue like when you you get a strained uh like you feel you've shouted a lot but i didn't shout anywhere so i don't know like uh what happened it just uh, then, so the, the endoscopy you, uh, said that my vocal cords wouldn't shut you know it's supposed to shut completely but then you effectively lost your job then because yeah, you couldn't completely. sing yeah so and people can... would call me for songs and things like that like and i would just say oh sorry initially i started lying and saying oh yeah yeah i'm just um you know out of town or this and that because i didn't want to be out of business and yeah but you could and talk then, you could talk no i could talk but that voice was like like i was like Ugh, like that so oh, i couldn't so, so... yeah so it was sounded bad. like sounded like you were sick or something, and yeah, like really sick. And then and after this, a while, this I went on for three years. Three years. If I hadn't saved my own self, it would go on for my so, whole so life. So all the experts couldn't diagnose. No, what was no, wrong. no, no. Speech therapist, voice therapist, uh, throat doctors, ENTs, everyone did all the digging and poking inside my throat. They did a lot. Oh. They did a lot. Um, because see, they don't look at you the way you're supposed to look at life. We are pieces of life and we're supposed to be looked at a certain way. And that's not something that exists in healthcare. Um, so they completely missed the real problem. So, which I discovered through my, you know, uh, through my music-based process, which I created now for everyone else to also um, use. But, yeah, so I don't know you, what I would what what would have happened yeah. if I didn't save me. <laughs> yeah. So if you hadn't have found this guy that that kind of showed you this and about using music and everything, and I mean he had cured people he had cured people with music as well. And you, who was this? And, uh, I mean, no, my mentor. Yes. No, my mentor was is my uh, so it's um, 
the person I learned Buddhist practice from. Uh, so okay. he's in Japan and he's the president of Sokogakai International. I've okay. never met him. But and you... I know him through his books. Uh, okay. so, but, but that line just, you know, triggered me to believe that I had to use music to elevate humanity. So I couldn't give up on music. I couldn't so take up can, a job. You kind of found the cure yourself through music. Correct. Okay, correct, from the correct. inspiration of that one line that you've read that one line yeah and and on my website and everywhere you go you will just see that line again and again and again because it's what drives me because this if i would have given up on myself if it was just about me so, i was suicidal so really? i wouldn't would have easily like given up on myself but the reason i continued is because it's not about me it's mm -hmm. because if i don't you know get up and recover or i don't stand up on my own two feet um mm -hmm. then people around me will never be inspired and if i can tell my story then i can inspire everyone the whole world maybe uh, so, so that that's what yeah i mean i i'm fascinated with this as well and it's a beautiful story but i mean i mean three years must have felt like an eternity of, of not being able to sing mm -hmm. and then yeah. and also going to specialists and they can't diagnose what the problem is mm -hmm. and then you pretty much found it yourself and cured yourself have you been back to the specialist and say look i can sing now and <laughs> no, they say well, how did you do that i don't bother but the one thing i did was i started because i didn't have any money you see for three years i wasn't working and i started eating from my savings and um, i just wanted to earn money so you i could have done modeling to... <laughs> no i wanted to do music <laughs> and and then i started teaching people how to sing but yeah. I wouldn't call it singing lessons as such, but more of voice coaching. Mm -hmm. And then at some point on Google, I showed up as the best voice coach in Mumbai. And I'm like, suddenly everybody's calling me. And I'm like, oh, really? And that happened through a website where I just enrolled just to make some money. And the funny thing was I got students. I told them I can't sing, but I'm going to show you something and you can try it and see if it works. And so I, I couldn't sing. But I trained students and then I was teaching at an academy um, of two famous music composers in Bollywood and they hired me for that. So that was one whole phase. And yeah, that got me going financially. And then I got back my events when I got back my voice. So everything I learned, I did, you know, share it with some people uh, at least. I, I, love, I, I love the determination, but also, I mean, there, there must have been a very low moment. I mean going on yeah. first year, second year, and third year, yeah. and, and, and thinking, what am I going to do with my life? And yeah. you don't know, I mean, losing your identity because you, you're you yeah. not that singer anymore. But now that, that now that you've got it back, I mean, you've, you've also gone back to Bollywood and you do stuff for them, or, or is that finished? So I started singing again, and I started doing Bollywood events, and that that's good. Uh, that's good uh, from the point of view of others everybody said oh you got back your career you're traveling again you're like doing events and performances here and there that's great and I was traveling around the world mm, but it wasn't good enough for me so what I decided in in 2019 I was in fact in London and I have a very 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 strong connection and with London and I I don't know what it is but it's definitely it was she, other she was there yeah, that's why I must connect with her too. Yeah, but I was in London in 2019. And um, I just, I went, I was, mm, do you guys know uh, Royal Docks? Uh, you know that area? And there's this art studio, like um, art cafe kind of thing there. Um, and I was with my friend who took me to an art exhibition. And was, I met an artist, a painter. And she and I just got talking and then we just started making music on the road. Like we just, and that's why I love London so much. It gives you that vibe. We, she was painting and I was making music and dancing on the road in front of her studio. Um, we, oh, I was like, a, like a basker. No, it wasn't even, we were not even singing for anyone. We just wanted to compose something. You didn't, something you didn't and put do, a hat out there to get some money? No, 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 no. It was oh. just like she had this beautiful studio next to the river. And we just said, hey, why are we sitting inside? It's summer, let's sit outside. So we just sat on the floor and we put like this huge sheet of paper, rolled it out on the, on that, uh, on the street or road, whatever it was. <laughs> like It was a small lane. And then people just 
crossed and they, they were like, okay, these two women are crazy. But then some people started, you know, um, staring at us for a while. And after that, I was like, what am I doing? I have to really let people know how I really got out of my dark days. And that was the technique conscious music code that I'm, that is now my business. But I didn't have the courage to speak about it because everyone said, oh, you're doing really well with Bollywood. Why do you need to do anything else? You know, you're just going to, it's going to be a suicidal career move and all that, all rubbish. But uh, I just decided after that London trip, I just decided I'm going to do this. And I did workshops there and people just loved it. And I was like, really? I couldn't believe it. And and then, then there was no looking back. I just kept doing what I do now, Conscious Music Code. So. so in a way, it was a blessing, although looking back now, it, I mean, at the time it probably wasn't, but I mean, yeah. now looking back, it was a blessing that you actually lost your voice because yes. you, dis you discovered yourself. Yes, yes. So, so my... You, yeah, you yeah, was, so if you didn't lose your voice, you wouldn't yeah. find yourself. For sure. I would have just been good at singing i would have been doing bollywood stuff and i would have maybe been famous and yeah, that's and all just been comfortable doing that and not yeah anything yeah else. and be completely empty inside so i keep saying this that suffering is the portal uh suffering is the joy mm -hmm. suffering is the way forward uh so i am very very fond of failures i'm very fond of suffering um as the portal yeah. to enter a greater state of mind yeah. and i i know that sound a bit crazy when i say i'm fond of these things what i mean by that is i'm fond of growth and growth cannot happen without this but then when we're suffering we don't have to make it sad uh yeah. suffering doesn't have to be sad so that's what i learned in that period that you can your suffering can be here and you can just rise above it I mean, first you got to experience it and learn whatever, and then you can rise about it and Absolutely. see, oh, okay, this is what's happening. This is just drama. This is complete drama. The only thing real is that my name, I'm born out of the earth to inspire and, you know, be a blessing to this earth. So that's the only thing real, everything. So tomorrow, if somebody takes away my business or something else happens, I'll just be like, cool, I'm still Gina Arthiva. And that part you cannot take away from me. <laughs> so... Yeah, so we're actually going to come on to the, the business in a minute. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Sheila's just put a comment in there. The obstacles in the way, the challenge is to find a way forward. But I, I find that I, I, I never, and because I've been in sales many years, people say like, or in with business owners, oh, I'm a failure. Mm, mm. And, I, and I used to think, forget that word. That word doesn't exist. You're not a failure. You're learning something. You just haven't learned, learned how to do it correct yet. Absolutely. And it's like when I failed my driving lesson and my test, uh, I felt a failure. But I wasn't really a failure. I knew how to drive. I just made some mistakes. So yeah. I was still learning. Yeah, so absolutely. Never see it as a failure. It's a learning. Yeah. Absolutely. That's and, exactly what it is. Yeah. So, I mean, there's just, I don't know if there's any questions at the moment before we, we, or you want to ask any questions to the audience, and then we'll just go into more about your programs, what you're doing, everything. A any questions, anyone at the moment? No. Okay. So, feel free. I mean, if you've got any questions, I want it to be interactive. So, if you've got any questions, then yeah, raise your hand or, or shout out. So Gina, so tell us now, what are you doing and what the programs that you, you offer and everything else? And is it for one-to-one? -one? Is it to groups of people? Is it certain types of people? Is it for certain types of problems or who you're working yeah. with on this? Do you do it alone? Yeah. In fact, I have some of um, my favorite people here. Uh, I have Jim, Roger, even Kunle. And thanks, Abhijit, for joining. And the rest of you are also going to turn out to be my favorite people just because you've, you're here to hear, listen to my story. Um, yeah, um, so I, um, okay, let me um, share it this way. So I call this technique that I created over that period of time when it was really dark for me. That technique is called Conscious Music Code. And I'll just explain the name because that will explain what it is. Um, music 
is music and it's always been known to be a very powerful um, catalyst of uh, to our emotional world uh, sometimes in good ways sometimes even in bad ways um, people think that music is always very healing that may not be so music can also drive you to aggression or you know negative thoughts so music can do anything that you want it to do um, so then that brought me to the thought of conscious music uh, because when you consciously decide to listen to things that elevate you or or elevate others uh, then we call that conscious where you you're aware that it's affecting you so you choose what kind of effect you want it to have so that's conscious and then music and then code is the part where my you know, I have a master's in computer science, so that the compu computational language comes natural to me. So that's probably why I did it. But the way it, I look at it is we are being run by the code of our beliefs, our emotions, our habits, our thoughts, our thought patterns, our emotional tendencies. So we kind of have an inner code that's running us. And if we have to change anything in the, in the way we see life, then we got to debug the code and find those bugs and then debug it. Um, so when we use music consciously as triggers to find out about our code, then find the bugs and then you know tweak and rewire uh, ourselves from the inside out, then that kind of uh, process is what we call conscious music code. And in fact, I will share with you um, just now uh, my my how my website is because uh, this might just give you an idea of the feeling so maybe i made a mistake i will share it like this one second sorry um and i will i will ask everyone a question so uh just from this does anyone have any thoughts about just this what do you feel what kind of feelings do you get what kind of thoughts do you get as you see this the picture the words and the music i feel my heart you feel your heart okay what about your heart I know, I know I'm alive. <clears throat> right. Thank you. Anyone else? For me, the, the picture and the, and the music don't really match somehow. Mm -hmm. I close my eyes and listen to the music. This is not the picture that I have in mind. Correct. Correct. That's good. That's good. That actually again proves what I do. Thank you for sharing that. So, all right, so I'm just going to close this. So um, two things that came out from this interactive thing. Uh, Roger said he feels his heart. Um, when I made this music, it was, um, it was uh, keeping in mind 72 beats per minute as uh, considered to be a very good heart rate. Um, the relaxed heart rate, if I'm right. Um, so I, this whole beat is created with that um, tempo in mind so that we can come closer uh, to, the, uh, to an ideal heartbeat, but also it's all about heart alignment with the mind. So yeah, I do a lot of exercises on this music and coming to what, uh, Laszlo, right? That's your name. Yeah, I love what you shared because that's the core of conscious music code. He said that the music doesn't match what he feels with, uh, the picture doesn't match with what he feels the music brings forth within him. And that's the whole point of conscious music code is, no, not that the picture and the music have to match or not match. The point of conscious music code is to realize that we associate with musical triggers differently. We associate with visual triggers also differently, but with music, it's like, a certain kind of music might be bringing forth a certain kind of emotion in you, but may it might bring bring out something completely different for me. And um, you know, it doesn't have to match. So whoever said that this music is supposed to be for this and that music is for that, uh, 
really haven't had situations where you play a beautiful sound of sea waves and someone crying because that traumatizes them. Because when you hear a beautiful sound of sea waves, you think it's very calming. But for someone who may have lost someone in the sea, for that person, the sound of the sea waves is gonna be traumatic. So we come to the realization that music may be very powerful, but what's more powerful is our own minds and how we associate with any kind of trigger, whether it's music or something else, but I don't wanna talk about something else. I can talk about music and that's the basis of conscious music code. So all the tweaking in the inner code that I do is through this very concept. So. And that it's good because that came out in this discussion. So Conscious Music Code, we offer programs now. So I will show you a little bit about that as well. So um, you can explore my website and um, you can take this free experience. It's a 20 minute experience. You just have to go to consciousmusiccode.com. But right now we're offering this um, e-program. So I did a lot of one-on-one -on -one sessions and group sessions, and I realized that the, the concept is so new. I can't just keep it to myself and to these few people. I have to let it out to the whole world. And then um, I met two people who really supported me. One is um, Jim. And I'll tell you about why that I say that in a minute. And also Roger, because Roger said, you know, you got to make it scalable. You got to make this accessible to people. So now we started doing online programs. So um, this is called Realize Your 2022 Dreams. It's all about finding a way to use music for coaching. Um, and so it has guided musical journeys, daily rituals, soundtracks, workbooks, journaling workbooks and calendars. And the formula is basically explore, transform, integrate. We go beyond the intellectual chatting mind to the deeper unconscious mind. Then we transform what we need to transform. With music, it's easier to transform because then you're not talking to your mind. You're just experiencing um, everything. And then you integrate through habits and we form habits using sound triggers. So that's kind of like the formula for anything that I do. Why it's so unique is because it integrates the mind, body, and five senses. It's not listening to music and getting healed by the music. The music is not going to heal me or you or anyone. It's you who will heal you. It's you who will empower you. It's you who will do all the active inner transformation. And that's why um, I have so much trouble explaining this to people who immediately connect my work with typical music therapy or sound healing. It's not like that. Of course, it can have, it, it is therapeutic, but it's, it's uh, empowering because you see my story is all about me getting up and figuring out things. And I didn't even know I had those things and abilities inside me. Um, so this is what I'm selling now. Uh, but also I have for those who want to just get a taste of it, you can just take my free experience or we're doing a 14 day free transformational challenge. So you can just sign up here, I'll put all the links here. Um, so, and also for this group who's attending, if you're interested in buying what I just showed you, you have a 10% discount code. And the other thing is that I'm working with Jim here. Uh, he and I met on LinkedIn where we started talking about his conference, the Happiness at Work conference in Belgium. And it's really amazing what they've come up with to bring the best speakers to talk about happiness at work. And there we had this idea, in fact, it was Jim's idea to connect the keynotes into a storyline with music. And then I said, hey, you know what? I do this really unusual kind of multi-sensory musical experiences and stuff. Would you be interested in that? He's like, yeah, that's what I want. And then we decided to put this together. So now at the conference on 28th June, uh, 2022, um, if any of you are in Europe, many of you are, please just join us. And yeah, you're gonna get this live experience of um, going on a journey. So whatever the keynotes are, even if you forget the words, the idea is to not let you forget the experience. So there's going to be smells, music, obviously, visuals, um, touch, and maybe some taste elements as well. So yeah, 
that's what I'm doing in a nutshell. I love it. I, I, I know you mentioned about before what you see when you hear the music and, and the picture. And like Laszlo said, it didn't really match, but then it could be just a blank, nothing there. And you just hear the music and you say, what do you imagine being a picture? Yeah. Because yeah. everybody will see it in a different way. Exactly. And that's the point. Zara? I have a question. Yes. Um, I always talk about conditioning and how we need to strip that off to get to our authentic self. And I guess that's kind of what you're doing with exactly. the transformational that's business. That's the word. Um, now, one question for you. What do you do about the blind spot? Yeah, so the blind spot is what you discover once you go through the music, uh, you let the music or you immerse in the music. So I'll give you an example. Like once I asked someone um, something, before I played any music and they gave no, no, I, I think it is like this, like this. I know myself, I'm like this, I'm like this, I'm like this. The moment I started taking that person through the journey and then I asked the same question at the end of it. He was like, you know, it's like, the, and he said some things which were completely different from what he said in the beginning. And it's all about him, right? And I didn't even ask for so many details, but he started saying. So he found his own blind spots because with the music, you don't even, you're not using your mind. You're not being told, think about this now exactly in this way. So we go on a content-free journey, like certain triggers are there. I do say, think about something, but I keep it very open-ended. So then people go past the, you know, uh, all the chatter of the mind. And that's why it's a blind spot, right? Because you don't see it normally with your conscious mind. So with the music, you can, chances are higher that you'll go deeper and see those uh, blind spots. But then again, it's not so easy all the time. Sometimes it takes more time to let the person sink in, especially the ones who are very analytical and very intellectual. It's very hard to go past that, you know, but and once they go past it, it's very easy. Sorry. And what do you do about um, trauma that goes beyond like past the age of like say three like you know zero to three because that's a really tricky point where people get very damaged mm. and, and how far would you say this healing this inner healing actually works so, from so what I, I i i think that um whether it's okay again i these are all things that i'm speaking from whatever experiences i've had on myself and with others mm -hmm. um zero to three is very 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 tricky period to deal with the traumas and all the things there however i feel that even things that come through your dna can change if you are willing to a point that like you just see the point of it and then you're willing so um, I think there's enough scientific proof also to now share that, but then I'm not saying that the music is going to do that for you. So in a way you can say I'm playing safe, but no, it's not about playing safe. The fact is people have to choose if they want to change. Like I was always sad. Like I think in my DNA, I had some sort of like, I don't know what it was, but I was always clinically, uh, not, not what's the right word. I was suicidal. Okay. And then they said, I'm depressed and take pills and everything. And it was just my nature. I was always suicidal. Anything would go wrong. I would think of death. How can I die? You know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was just like that. So if can I ask I, you a question, did you have a control parenting? Were your parents very controlling? No, no. I, especially at the, at the, at the, you know, when I was, I was really young. I, I don't remember what the, my parents were the sweetest, like, okay, they had problems, but mm -hmm. that had nothing. To, I could never understand why I was so suicidal. I was born like that, maybe. I was just like, I always wanted to just, just die. And then- And now, the opposite. No, and now, that's why I call myself Gina. And by the way, my parents named me Gina as a nickname, which means to live. So why should I have, so sometimes it's not even about zero to three or it, sometimes we're just carrying things genetically. Yeah, I do know that my dad's sister uh, had committed suicide. So maybe it's in the family. I don't know, whatever it is, I'm saying if I could move my genes around, I could tweak them, then anyone can. Um, and my friend who committed suicide, he's the one who triggered me to create Conscious Music Code. He committed suicide in 2010. I was also suicidal and we used to talk about this uh, and then he went and did it. You know, he just jumped. And the last thing he wrote was a song 
that was a suicide note he wrote a song and the song was something we were doing in the studio every day we were recording it it's a it's a song we were recording for a film and that song was all about you know darkness getting pulled into darkness and that's when i decided after his death i'm going to choose consciously what i listen to and that's when i started advocating conscious music so till date like i keep saying my work is a tribute to his uh, you know like he didn't he didn't get the help it's a good way to remember him. how do you feel when you hear that song now have you have you managed to cope or does oh it yeah, yeah. This, i wouldn't even use the word cope because that song reminds me what it's for me now when i hear it, it i feel it's joy celebrate. because i'm like wow you thank you for you know existing no, not to thank for my friend committing suicide but thank you for bringing me to this awareness that song is just yeah change your so, life yeah okay. yeah so gina you've been a, a fantastic guest we could talk for hours i i want to ask you loads and loads of questions but in the essence of time we, we've come on the hour and i do have a hard stop here because i got yes. another call that's starting now actually so I, I forgot to add a buffer time and so i already booked an appointment so i have to jump off onto that but i mean i i put in the chat a lot of links so if people want to look in the chat uh, there's some links in there if not then connect definitely connect with us on, on linkedin and i will also add people i mean connect with me first so i know who you are and then i'll add people to the the, the linkedin group and then we can share more information and as you know you can post in there as well we'll move a lot of the stuff from the, the chat itself into the group because as I said that there's a limitation in, in there and I can't add more people. And it's a pity because there's some new exciting people I want to add in there. So, but I can in the group, right? So we can do that. And yeah, if you've got anything final words that you want to leave us with, then please do so. And yeah, I just want to say that we just have to remember to believe in the greatness of ourselves. And I would love for you to... Uh, experience my musical journey so that's it and thank you very very much and also elvin for being sick and still coming and yeah and so here's i'm just typed in a code which is a discount code for all of you just in case you want to try or else let's just connect and um yeah, yeah. particularly for your 14 day challenge that sounds very interesting yes th that's starting this sunday by the way so if you guys can um so if you're interested just so that's all very new. And I've taken a, a, a quick look and it looks fantastic. I mean, to learn more about this and how it works. Mm. And, and music is the essence of everything that we do. I mean, we grew up with music. We listen to yes. music for different emotional moods that you're in. And yes. it, it definitely inspires and it, it can have a positive, but also a negative impact on your life as well. So you've exactly. got to be careful yes exactly exactly and also getting to the right frequency because that was also changed yes so yes. bringing it back to how it's supposed to be but anyway on that note you've been our 71st guest the first one of the year absolutely yes. inspiring story something that i would personally like to learn more about and yeah i thank you very much for being a guest i thank anyone that's that's new here they're welcome to come any Friday. It's the same link. So, yeah. And also to, the, the beauty of this is to move forward, connecting with each other. So if everybody wants to connect, uh, typically LinkedIn, because that's the best way, but then you can find other ways after that. And then we can all stay connected and then grow and share stories as we go along. So if you want to be, also if you want to be a guest and you haven't been already, then let me know and you're more than welcome i can slot you in and we have our special guest next week is actually here zara so tune in to learn about zara next week so i wish everybody a fantastic weekend yes and and do join if you've enjoyed it then feel free to to come again there's no obligation to come every week but pop in and out and if you want a particular recording particularly on someone that's been a guest before and you want to learn about dream deciphering, then mm. there is a recording somewhere that Sheila's got. So, I mean, I, I can dig that out. So just let me know. And yeah, I can share links with people. If you want to know who the previous guests were, just look at my LinkedIn profile and you can just scroll back through 
the kind of the profiles of the people there. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, everyone. Thank you so very much. much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Nice meeting everybody. Lovely, Gina. Thank you very yes. much. Thank you. Lovely. Thank, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.